Ah, that's some good music. That's some good noise you hear there. You know what that is? No, it's not static. That is rain. That is uh, drops falling on my corrugated tin roof in my garage here in Chino Valley, Arizona. We haven't had rain in a while. It's nice to have. It's nice to see. It's nice to feel and nice to... uh, to uh, smell that rain. I love that, uh, that, that fresh fallen rain smell. And we haven't had much of that in northern Arizona in, uh, in recent months. It's been a bit of a dry spell, and the start of the fire season came a few weeks ago, and it was getting a little scary. We've had some, some close calls and some evacuations and some hard work done by our first responders, our, our firefighters and, and the like, the sheriff's departments and PD up here to keep everybody safe. And it's, uh, it's nice to see some moisture falling from the sky. Like I said, we haven't had it in a while. So I am sitting out in my garage recording this intro for episode 176 that was recorded just a couple of days ago at Jersey Lily Saloon in Prescott, right on Prescott's Whiskey Row. With the fun, interesting, and talented Glenn Walker. Now, Glenn is uh, a local musician. He's been in the area for several years and uh, playing in and around Prescott and Prescott's Whiskey Row. Uh, We wanted to plug a couple of his shows, including the Wednesday, every Wednesday, uh, rock classic rock jam. That's what it's traditionally been, the classic rock jam at Jersey Lily from 7 till whenever they stop, usually around 10, 1030. Glenn is reshifting that uh, focus from classic rock to a couple other things, and he'll talk about that. He's opening it up for, uh, for just musicians of all genres and uh, some really talented folks drop in to play there with the backbone being Glenn's band. So he'll, he'll, he'll inform you on that and why he's flipping it from classic rock to just good old music. Uh, so listen in as Glenn Walker talks about that and what brought him to, uh, to Prescott, Arizona, and uh, some trials he's gone over in the last year or so that kind of have, uh, have uh, reinvigorated his music passion and his musical career. So listen in to that. I hope you enjoy it. Again, we recorded that at Jersey Lily Saloon on Whiskey Row, Whiskey Row's only second-floor balcony bar. It's a great spot up there, and the best, best part about Jersey Lily is uh, the free popcorn. They got a popcorn machine right there, and uh, so I... I bought dinner for everyone there with free popcorn. That's what we did. Uh, Glenn uh, sat down to talk about, uh, again, what brought him to Prescott, what, uh, what he's been up to in the music scene, and also the various incarnations of bands he's with now. He plays with several, including Off the Record with Sky Conwell, uh, a classic rock group, uh, his own group, his, uh, he's got a, a, a solo gig uh, coming up June 22nd at Big Daddy E's Barbecue, the official, unofficial sponsor of the Mile High Show. Big Daddy E's Barbecue on Butterfield Lane in Chino Valley. That is where you can get the best barbecue around. So uh, listen to some music, stuff your ears with good music, and stuff your face with good barbecue. That should be on the T-shirts for uh, Big Daddy. Stuff your ears while you stuff your face. How's that? How's that for a slogan, Big Daddy? Glenn will be there from 5 to 7 p.m. on June 22nd out there on the patio on those Friday night music nights. He'll be there the 22nd. Each and every Friday between uh, Sky Conwell booking him and Leslie Earl Lyman kind of wrangling him around, we got some good musicians playing at Big Daddy, so check them out. BDEBBQ.com is where you can find out information on Big Daddy's. Uh, Great food, great music, great people. So uh, remember, Friday nights is where you can hear good music, including Glenn Walker on the 22nd. Uh, I mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, Sky Conwell, who Glenn plays with. Let's talk a little bit about Sky and uh, something that happened to him the other night. We mentioned it uh, in the podcast, but it was either Monday or, Monday or Tuesday night. I can't remember. Sky, who lives right on Whiskey Row, right like a block off of it, right downtown, uh, had his gear, not uh, fortunately not his guitars, but all his hardware, mic stands, his PA system, 
buckets and buckets of cords and different miscellaneous stuff and mics and all that good stuff in the back of his truck, covered up with his camper, his little Tahoe cover thing on there. And sometime in the middle of the night, uh, he he was broken into in his truck. So a couple things. One, Sky, I feel for you, but that is not going to stop me from making fun of you for leaving stuff in your truck. You're not going to do that again, are you? Uh, so I definitely will make fun of you in person for that. But uh, he posted on social media first thing in the morning, I believe it was Tuesday, that he had had most of his gear taken. Uh, yes, it was Tuesday morning because he had gigs Tuesday night. And uh, he was in a panic because Sky, former guest of the show, former host of this show, he used to host a recurring feature here with singer-songwriters. We want to maybe get him to do that again. That was a lot of fun. But uh, he is one of the hardest-working guys around. Uh, he is fortunate enough to make his living with his art as a musician, Sky Conwell. And uh, so his, his tools were taken. His his livelihood was uh, was was taken from the back of his truck in the middle of the night from Whiskey Row. And he was in a bit of a panic. He put the word out just to let folks know. Uh, and uh, immediately, immediately, the community, specifically the music scene, came to the rescue and offered up uh, whatever he needed, guitars, instruments, mics, stands, PA, um, chords, anything he needed to get him to the next gig. And uh, leading that charge was, uh, no stranger to this show, the soldier for the scene, Mr. Leslie Earl, not a serial killer Lyman. And Les hooked up with Sky almost immediately, gave him a, a bunch of extra gear so that he could perform that very night. Uh, and it just kept coming over the next 24, 12, 24 hours uh, non-stop offers for what can we do to help. And the reason I'm saying that is because uh, a couple of things. We want to remember that in spite of big city problems that we may experience here in Yavapai County in the Quad Cinco City area, whatever you want to call it, the Prescott area, even though we do suffer from and feel the effects of big city uh, blight crime and and drug abuse and uh you know just knuckleheads of all kinds uh we feel that because hey it's 2018 you feel it everywhere never forget we are also a small town with small town mentality and small community awareness and that was demonstrated with everyone coming to uh, offer aid to Sky Conwell. Uh, so again, not to forget, I am going to make fun of you, Sky, for leaving things in your car. Uh, kudos to all of those who offered up and, and were able to provide assistance to Sky because it shows what a great tight-knit community we are as well as how supportive the music scene here in Prescott is. Uh, you know, you're going to find backbiting, you're going to find the rumor mill, you're going to find the little petty jealousies that you will find anywhere at any level in any form of art or business. But when it all boils down to it, uh, this is a great community, and they demonstrated that by coming to the aid of an artist in need. Now, having said that, yes, Leslie Earl, not a serial killer Lyman, came to the rescue, but never forget, Les was not the hero that night. The real hero was Les's hair. Les's hair came to the rescue, and uh, and we uh, we really should put his hair on a stamp, maybe a coin. Maybe uh, Les's hair can get its own uh, its own. Uh, gig somewhere just less his hair not less maybe less his hair should have his own podcast the leslie Lur leslie earl lyman hair podcast i like it i think we got to do that so anyway that uh that is some of the things that have been happening in and around here and the the silver lining to that uh that sad uh sad story of sky's gear is that the next morning uh i believe through a traffic stop 
a uh, guy was pulled over and uh, and subsequently arrested because all of Sky's gear was still in the back of his car. So uh, evidently this this gentleman had, uh, and I use that term lightly, this gentleman had robbed and broken into several cars and maybe a home or two in that neighborhood and had all of that stuff still in his car, was arrested. Sky will, if he hasn't already, by the time you're hearing this, will very shortly be getting all of his gear back. And uh, there is the happy silver lining to that story. Uh, The other silver lining is Sky has now realized you do not leave things in the car uh, if you don't want them to disappear. So good ending to that story. And uh, and again, a good uh, a good representation of the local art scene. Uh, please use the uh, the uh, link at milehighshow.com, the Amazon link, to do all your online shopping if you are an online shopper. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does let Amazon know you got to them through us, and they give us a little thank you at the end of the month. So please go to milehighshow.com. Click on that Amazon link and then bookmark that on your smartphone, on your tablet, on your desktop or on your uh, on your toolbar and use that to do all of your online shopping through Amazon by way of the Mile High Show. It gives us a little thank you at the end of the month and uh, it helps us to uh, continue to rove about in Yavapai County and beyond to bring you the artists, musicians, comics, entertainers, and everybody else we talk to. So it's a good way for you to support not just independent podcasters like myself, but also a way to support the artists that we support, like Glenn Walker, who's going to sit, uh, is going to be uh, on today's show number one seventy six. Right next to that Amazon link is an Audible link. You can click on that and use the code Mile High at checkout to get a free audio download and a free thirty month a thirty day subscription a one month subscription. Now, if you're not familiar with audio, think back to the old books on tape, books on CD, but much much more. There's over 180 thousand titles at Audible.com, and you can get a free one by using the code Mile High at checkout. Use that link right there at MileHighShow.com, and you can choose from audio uh, uh, audio books, articles, magazines, lectures, uh, audible exclusive comedy content, uh, comedy albums, uh, a ton of stuff on there. Nearly 200,000 titles to choose from, and you can get one for free along with a 30-day trial membership by using the code MILEHIGH at checkout. Even if you decide to cancel before or during that 30-day free trial, you keep that free download. You keep it, no strings attached, no questions asked, and you get that by using the code MILEHIGH at checkout at audible.com. Um, what else? Support your local artists. Thanks for the rain. Thanks for stopping me from having to go out and do yard work. Um, thank you for showing me where the leaks are in my, uh, in my garage. Uh, get out there, support local musicians, support local artists, support the local art scene, and better yet, or just as important, I should say, support the businesses that support local artists. And you do that by listening to the Mile High Show. So sit back, enjoy. Glenn Walker from Jersey Lily Saloon right there on Whiskey Row for episode 176. Glenn Walker, musician and all-round interesting guy. So how how long have you been running the... uh the jam night on Wednesdays. It actually started about uh, eight years ago. I, yeah. I ran a jam night for. I did it for three years solid. You did eight years ago. I did eight years ago. Yeah, we're at, here in this building. In this in building Jersey? here, when it was belonged to uh, Joni and Tommy Meredith. I was sitting at the bar one night talking to Tommy, and he was wanting to know, uh, you know, what you do to get some money in this yeah. bar. And I'm like, well, why don't you have an open jam? So I ended up yeah. doing an acoustic open jam night for him. For three years, and that was probably about eight years ago, I stopped doing that. Yeah. I moved to Prescott 14 years ago, 14 and a half years ago. I'm from Canada originally. What's well, a nice Canadian boy like you doing with this dirty American rock and roll? <laughs> I took How'd a, that start? 
Wow. I was working. At, I'm a lumber trader. I'm in the lumber business and have been for years and years, 30 years. <clears throat> I um, started out with, actually, uh, I started with a musical family. My parents had a country and western band all through the nice. 60s, 70s, 80s. W- whereabouts in Canada? Uh, Elsie Craig, Ontario, actually. Is a Ontario? Plug, yeah, a little plug for that. London, Ontario, between yeah. Toronto and Detroit. So that, was. I, I'm an idiot. So yeah. Toronto, Great that's Lakes. like the east. East yeah, Coast side. Great Lakes okay. area. Midwest. Great. Okay, gotcha. Midwest, gotcha. yeah. And then I started working uh, for this company, and it was working throughout the Midwest. Well, up, let's drop back a little bit. Sure. You, you growing up, they're, they're doing a band pro- playing professionally? or Yeah, they played bar professionally. Bar gigs, or were they all touring? The what was they, going they on? They mostly did um, concerts and weddings and yeah. stuff like that. They tried working to stay away from the, Working though. musicians, yeah. Grew up on a farm. Um, what kind of farm? We had, a, we had cash crop and beef. Feedlots. What, what's cash crop? What it, I'm, I'm corn, soybeans, wheat. Okay. Yeah. Anything Mid- you can sell for cash. Pure Midwestern stuff, gotcha. you know. <laughs> Through hay, I, pick stones, you know, worked. For me, I grew up on the West Coast yeah. in the 70s. Sure. In a, in a suburb of a very small town of 150,000. Moved there to Paulden. Yeah. <laughs> my small shot. town was 623 in a good day. Uh, <laughs> but in my head, when I think Canada, I think, yeah. you know, the Great White North, yeah. moose hunting, hockey, and then, you know... Flat and cornfields where <laughs> yeah. I grew up, man. Really? A lot of hockey. I played hockey. I just retired yeah. playing hockey last year, actually. And were you playing here in yeah, some, of the, playing some here, of the adult yeah, leagues? Yeah, yeah. Over at the, at the yeah, arena? The, yeah. So you yeah. must know catfish. Oh, I very much know catfish. <laughs> I'm <Yes>. sorry. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> guys, those guys know me. Yeah. So, so yeah. growing up in Canada in the, in the 60s, I'm guessing you got... You got a couple of years on me. I'm thinking. I was How born in '61. '61. Okay, July 24th, '61. I'm '66. Yeah. Okay, so about five years. Yeah. My sister was '61. Youngest of four boys. All boys. All no boys. Girls? No girls. My mom. Uh, you know, we terrorized her all oh, the time. Oh man. She was still a with marvelous. Us? Mom and dad. Mom's still with us. Dad died yeah. a couple of years ago. Um, she just uh, marvelous musician. I mean, wow, fat, a country fat, western style. Country and western style. She played old time fiddle music. Yeah. Uh, played the fiddle. Played the uh, played the bass guitar and played the piano. That that had to contribute to her still being able to be sharp. If oh, she's still absolutely. Playing, so having yeah. that artistic she still is. She outlet. Just, yeah, she just turned twenty or eighty six. Twenty six. Yeah. Eighty six back in March the twenty fourth. My mom is now <coughs> eighty two. Yeah, and uh, had a couple of strokes. Her yeah. her mind her her it, it, the, her strokes affected just her memory. Oh, that's too she bad. vaguely remembers us. She's extremely happy. She's great. Well, that's awesome. She's happy go lucky. Maybe I had a stroke. Uh, yeah, wait, <laughs> I'm I'm ahead of there. My memory shot, but so I am I mean, convinced we we broke her. Yeah, Be, I'm the youngest of se- uh, six. Yeah, five still living. Six kids crammed into seven years. My <laughs> oldest sister, the oldest one. Almost exactly seven years older than me. That's ridiculous. Oh, and she wanted to have like twelve. Yeah. And uh, I, she, we we broke her. Every every little bit of problem she has is directly related to six kids, seven years, <laughs> for, uh, you know, four boys, sure. two girls, and we just rode her ragged and and knock the uh, knock the uh, sanity right out of yeah. her. <laughs> That's, I what's, hear you. What's the age difference between the boys? Uh, nine years between four of us. So my oh, oldest brother's nine. That's a pretty nine. good span. Yeah, he's uh, he plays banjo. Um, my other two brothers don't do much. My my one this next oldest to me took piano lessons. Never really kept it going. Yeah, I've got two daughters in the music industry back in Canada. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're uh, thirty three and thirty one. Nice. One's a drummer. The youngest one's a drummer. The oldest one's a singer-songwriter. She nice. Does a little bit of touring here and there. She's played in a plug, bunch of different her. bands. Who, who, who are they? Um, plug well, them. plug them. Yeah, yeah. Well, Becky Walker is my oldest one, and uh, my youngest one would be Mallory Walker. Yeah, she'd go. They both. It's not. It's it's Becky Walker McDuff. Actually, is her last okay. name. But uh, yeah, she's got a couple of. She does a bunch of singer-songwriter stuff. She's got some. Uh, Songs that are actually on the radio in Western Canada. Nice. Yeah. What style? What, it, what singers? Uh, are, you know, she's. I, uh, I, I almost said Americana, but can, no, Canada, she is Americana. Canada, yeah, Canada, that is, she's Canadian. Americana. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can, Canadiana. Canadiana. Yeah, there you go. It's the same thing. Kind of America, you know, Americana stuff. Singer songwriter. Yeah, same, same sort of stuff. She plays guitar, yeah, yeah and bass. Uh, my nice. youngest daughter plays the bass and drums. 
So, so you got them. You, you got five years on me, and your kids are in thirties. Yeah, I was. I was. I was hooked I, up young. All right, I farmed. Now for drop a long back time. five years. I got a. Yeah. I got an eight year old at home. Yeah, he's our one and only. And uh, everybody always tell, tell oh, when, when they found out my wife was pregnant, oh, he's going to make you feel so young. It's going to be so good. No way, man. I feel like a 95-year-old man trying to keep up with him. It's well, killing me. I started over again. I got a fiancé that's, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's got a 10-year-old as her youngest, a 13-year-old, and a 22-year-old. So between the two of us, we had five kids ranging oh, wow. from 33 to 10. Yeah. So it sounds like music was always kind of part of your life. It's always been part of my life, yeah. Always guitar? What else you play? I play, uh, well, I play, I actually started playing bass, is what I started playing. Yeah. Um, because everybody needs a bass player, nobody needs a guitar player. Yeah. They're a dime a dozen, as myself. But uh, I play mandolin, piano, guitar. Nice. You know, a little bit. So you get into the into the lumber trade? I get into the lumber business after the farming was so good when the interest rates went to 23% Jeez. in the 80s, yeah. 86, actually, 87. Get Farm aid didn't help you? John uh, Cougar Mellencamp didn't put a golden... That, that's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> <mention that. laughs> so I, I got into the lumber business and, and uh, was selling roof trusses and, and lumber into the Midwest, you know, down in Kentucky, uh, yeah. all over the place. And I ended up doing a job... In Cincinnati, Ohio, I ran into a guy down there. His name is Alan Stenger. And uh, when you mentioned Mellencamp, <laughs> his his drummer was Mellencamp's brother. Um, I can't even for the life yeah, of me remember the bald his name. Guy, what, yeah, 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 okay, I know who you're talking about. But uh, yeah, we started playing in a band down in Cincinnati, and that's that's how I, you know, prior to that, I was playing music in Canada. But that's how I came into the states. I started playing with him and his. His long lost father that he found out was doing uh, some touring, actually making a, bu- making yeah, a buck we, or two playing. We music? used to play a weekly gig in Cincinnati, Ohio all the time. And then uh, his dad, um, we found him. He was adopted. There was myself, uh, Alan, and another guy by the name of Jimmy Munch who did a little trio thing in a bar, very similar to Jersey yeah. Lily's type of deal, every Wednesday night because I was there. And. Uh, we found his dad, who because he was adopted, his dad ended up where was uh, the lead guitar and singer for a band called the Juveniles, Juveniles. back in the day, and they used to open wow. up for Jimi Hendrix. Oh wow! Yeah, so he was a pretty talented musician. So we all en- ended up getting together in Indiana, playing with John M- Mellencamp's brother, and I can't even remember his f- first name, but um, he was a drummer. And, yeah, and, uh, uh, Bobby Bobcat. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Yeah, I can't remember his first name, but yeah, anyway, the Cougar, the, the yeah, Bobcat. Right, uh, right. We ended up going down to uh, the Florida Keys and did a little touring down there too. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it was kind of fun. Some stuff in Indiana, uh, you know, Kentucky, Ohio. All this while, while you're still doing the lumber stuff. Yeah, were you, were I'm, you able I'm to still do, doing the lumber stuff. Really? Yeah, I, you know, nice. I, I'm a. So I, you're killing our forest. Thanks. Yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> Killing the American You're also force making now. Sure I got paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And firewood. And firewood. Guitars. Guitar. Drums. Yeah. You know. All the good stuff. Yeah. So then I came out west with that same job and went on a website that was a relocation website, findyourspot.com was called. Yeah. And Prescott came up because of the music scene and everything else. And I actually didn't really play a whole lot the first while I was here because I had kind of left that behind. It was yeah. really busy, busy, busy all the time. And then I started doing that open jam thing, and then I quit again. And then uh, 54 weeks ago, I had a life-altering experience that happened to me and uh, where I had a heart attack and oh. coded three times over here at Yavapai. Um, thank them. They brought what, me back. What were you doing when it happened? Sitting I'm on the morbid. couch, man. Yeah, <laughs> that was Is that it. why it happened. Yeah, but you know, I was playing hockey right up to that. I, yeah, I had had a hockey. I, I, and you're fit. I mean, you look. Well, I you look I, younger than me, but that doesn't. That's not saying much. Right? <laughs> I mean, you're fit. You're yeah. strong. You're robust. Yeah. Man, you know, man, I, as they like was, to say, I was, stick, I was, stick around. It's the singles group behind you. Yeah, right. No, I, I, I mentioned a fiance. Oh, yes, it's sorry. completely <laughs> supportive of me doing this. I can't say that. Uh, that wouldn't go over well. So, so yeah, when I had was an, this? this was uh, 54 weeks ago, actually. It was June 2nd oh, of uh, last year. And I, I coded three times while they were putting three stents in me. Um, my my fiancé is a RN. She's the one that took me to the oh, hospital. Wow. 
I didn't have time to get get an ambulance. We just drove because it yeah. was, I knew what was going on. And she knows the drill. She knew what was she going on. She knows the drill, yeah. She used yeah. to be a cardiac nurse. Now she's a NICU nurse out in the Yavapai, is, you know, level two trauma nurse. Yeah. So she, knows, she knew what she was doing. Anyway, they brought me back, and uh, apparently in that condition, that's about a 2% survival rate. Wow. And, um, yeah, the surgeon that did the work on me, uh, when he released me from the hospital, he said, I've had this happen before, but nobody ever walked away from it, so... I got lucky, so I decided, you know what, there's a passion still in me, and that's to play music. So that's why I took this over from the guys that were doing it before yeah, me. Who, who, Sky was Sky doing was it for doing a while, let's throw me, that yeah. out there. Sure. What, I don't know, if, if you're, most of the people that listen to this, probably 80% of the people that are going to be here tonight at Jersey sure. Lilies for the jam night, sure. no Sky, we're all hooked up on Facebook and stuff. Yeah, exactly. What happened to him last night? You saw <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I talked to him today because uh, you know, just to throw another plug into Jersey Lilies, we're we're playing here on the third and the fourth of July. Uh, oh, Walker, what a weekend! Walker yeah. and Company, which is my band. And I want to get into everybody sure, you're playing sure. with. We'll get there. But Walker <laughs> but, and Company, the third and the fourth, which is the big July fourth rodeo. With the rodeo, yeah, week, the, the rodeo's that week before, right? I right, think the yeah, 30th, the parade and all that's the third. But it all but, culminates with the fourth. Correct. Yes. Oh man, this place is gonna be jumping. It should be. Good. It should be a good time. Yeah. So yeah, there's Sky in that band. Eldon oh, nice. Long is in that band. Uh, Deville Riley is in that band. I myself. know the name. I can't Deville play Riley's a drummer. Okay. Yeah. Not, he, has he sat in here a couple he, times? He's actually uh, he's the basis of this band that we start do this. You know, I think I do know who he is. He's okay. a black guy. Yeah, was he? A, does he go to that Windsock Jam? He as does. Well? Yeah. Okay, yeah. He also I, plays bass. Yeah, I talked to him a couple weeks ago. I was over there with Scott O'Neill sure. and Chris Berry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I know exactly who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's a good dude, man. Really so, good guys. I, I'm sure we got. I'm really going to change the whole. Sure. title of this podcast to the tangent show because yeah. I, I go all over the place <laughs> but that's how i talk anyway sure. so it doesn't matter so but i wanted to touch a little bit about sky because he was running this for a while guy where he's got he's gigs, the hardest seven, working mus- musician seven nights in town. a week there's no question uh he got sometimes truck, more yeah yeah m- yeah multiples on a yeah. day got his truck broke into last night i know Thankfully, it sounds like he was like hardware. But they got the Bose towers. They got the Bose towers, which is his solo gig yeah. stuff. But he's and and hardware stands, yeah. mics, and all mic of his chords, which is cords, just a lot of stuff. His his yeah. guitars were either inside the They're truck. In the, or his, yeah, they were not going to be doing the, my, the first thing came to my mind yeah. when I saw that yeah. late last night is, what are you leaving that stuff in your truck for? <laughs> Well, and yeah. I know his where he lives without giving away his address. Yes, where he lives, his parking is like. You can almost reach out and touch it, right? But still, that's like me and my camera gear. I ne- I live on an acre fenced in, and it comes in the house every single night. I, I suggested he got insurance. I talked to him just briefly yeah. before we were talking today. <laughs> It'd be a good idea to get some but, insurance. But wait, the reason I bring it up, obviously, not to poke fun at, at Sky. No, no, no. I'll do that in person. Is say, what were you doing? <laughs> but he posts this online last night. Hey, I got yeah. broke into. They got all my stuff. Immediately, people, what do you need? Where are you playing? What do you got? Absolutely. Offering up gear. You were on there. I came kind of late to the show You know, sure. last night. See, but I, I got nothing to, you know, what am I going to offer him? <laughs> oh, you got microphones. But Les Lyman jumps in sure. and gave him a bunch of stuff to get, so he could play last night, which right. he had a gig. Yes. But just watching, not just musicians, but people, a buddy of mine, Bob Salazar, who's a music fan, he's on all the music pages and stuff. Sure. And runs, he's an admin on a couple pages, good buddy of mine. And others just saying, what do you need? Do you need do you, a couple people I know off from talking to them. We're offering them, do you need some cash to get you over the hump? You know, things sure. like that. Um, again, Les, we don't want to pump him up too much because he's already well, he's like got big four. hair. Yeah, it's, it, it, and I like to say <laughs> it wasn't really Les who was the yeah. hero. It was Les's hair. Sure. Was yeah, it wasn't Les at all. Speaking of the devil, here's, here's your yeah, did you just walk in? No, not Les. No. You're a bass player. Oh, yeah. Eldon. Yeah. No, uh, drummer. I'm sorry. Who's Deville? Your, Deville. Yeah, he plays. Ba- you said he plays bass. He in, plays in bass as well. So yeah. there he is. I've been running into him all over. Yeah. The place. But it, it, what, what it really clicked to me when I was reading this stuff late last night was how in tune the whole art artists in general. Yes. But the community and really especially the musicians in this area, how they're they're 
a tight knit group, which obviously came across when you were searching through the website, sure. finding a place to land. It's Absolutely, the music scene itself. Yeah. But just the way everybody kind of comes together, support shows tonight, Wednesday night at Jersey Lily. You got your classic rock jam. Down the street, there's a singer-songwriter night. Right. Dave Whitley runs at, at the Birdcage. Thursday night is, is a ticketed show in any other town. Don Sheik's open exactly, mic over yes. at the cage. That blues jam every other. So anyway, you can go on and on. Yeah, it goes on and on. And but I'll tell you. It's not just the musicians. The community goes out. And yes. shows up and supports. You see Bill Norton. I know. Some of these faces every single time somebody plugs in a guitar. Absolutely. And it's fabulous. It's what I think great. is really cool is all the places that I play and I, get the, I see the same face in the crowd. You know, yeah. wherever they find out how I'm playing there, you know, Facebook or whatever, word of mouth, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. The other cool part about the, the jam sessions are is that I think it's very unique how uh, the musicians themselves end up with a lot of good collaborations out of the yeah. whole thing. I mean, I never would have met Sky, not, yeah. not for that, you know. And, and now I play in two separate bands with Sky, and you know, let's talk which is kind of cool. Where, what else are you in? You got, wa- I'm so, sorry. Wa- so Walker and Company. Walker and Company, your band. My band. And What's then, the genre? What are you playing? It's, it, you know, it's kind of like, uh, it's Americana, it's country yeah. or rock. Or rock. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Whatever the audience, and I kind of feel for that as we go along. Gotcha. Which actually, the Jersey Lily's uh, jam night is kind of it's 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 That's going a through representation. A, well, it's going through a bit of a change here, where you know I don't really want to keep this thing just pigeonholed to, yeah. to classic rock because there's a lot of other good players that I'm I'm with. This guy runs a jam over at uh, uh, Prescott Valley on Sidekicks. Every, Sidekicks, yeah, yeah, every other Sunday. And, you know, there's a bunch of good players out there that they just don't play classic rock. So. Yeah. It's more of a country it's jam. It's more of a country there, yeah. jam, but it's now changed to Americana. So I, and I actually think that that's something everybody enjoys. Well, and, and, I don't know what Americana is, honestly. Well, this uh, new yeah, genre, how do you say I, that? I don't know what that is. Uh, you know, because, you know, how, how do you pigeonhole stuff? Obviously, somebody, and, and he's the first to admit it, somebody comes walking in looking like a a less of 20 years ago, right. you expect him to start bursting into Slayer or something like right. that. And then he blows, comes in and will either blow the room away with some incredible blues on his, on his, uh, on his uh, electric guitar, or he plugs in his, his acoustic and annihilates the room with some of the sweetest, most beautiful chords and lyrics you'll ever hear. I know. When he's singing about it guy. to his wife. I mean, it's like, what an oxymoron. You look at the guy and you go, oh, no, I know what he's going to play. Click, no, no, no idea. No, 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 no. But no, no. he could go anywhere. Sure. And I've seen you do the same thing. Yeah, I played, you know, everything from Hank yeah. Williams to I don't know what, you know. Yeah. Something and, new. Well, and think about <laughs> it. You know, one, of the, one of the most well-known, quote-unquote, rock bands, yeah. the Eagles, through oh, the absolutely. 70s and 80s. Pull out their early stuff. They were country, sure. man. Oh, absolutely. They, you know, what, I'm a big what is fan it? of the Eagles. Yeah, yeah I don't so know. What, what do you call it? It's yeah, great music. Yeah, like, yeah. One of these nights, I mean, that was. if you talked to yeah. my dad, that was hard rock. You know? <laughs> yeah, depending on who you ask, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's the way so it works. So you got Walker and Company. Yeah, Walker on and Company. Third and fourth, right here at Jersey Lilies, July third and fourth. And then we're here again on the twenty. Well, sorry, no, that's not Walker and Company. We are actually out at Stone Ridge. We're actually well. Let's go back a bit. Then I also have Off the Record, which I'm yeah. in the band with with Sky and that. Uh, Eldon's we're playing, in that as well. Right? Eldon's in that as well with Mike Hutchison as the drummer. Yes. And um, I believe Friday night we're playing at Lucy's for that. So uh, what, what, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. And you could. Sky answer. and I both you, book things. You can not answer, and and we can cut it out if you want. What do you think of Lucy's? That's where we took those pictures. Yeah, I've, I've dropped at Lucy's. I've, I've been at Lucy's several times before. I have a Harley, so I. You I know, love I'm coming love back. Lucy's. I love Lucy's. I, love, I don't go in there as much as I. Let's call to. it a dive bar. I love dive oh, it's bars. Great. You know, it's, I played. The, it, it is what I would call a straight up honky tonk. Yeah, absolutely it's beautiful. Yeah, man, I, so I you've played. Been, you've I, been around here for a while. You remember Pinion Pines? Yeah, right? absolutely. I used to love that place. <laughs> it's a great spot. I used to, uh, well, actually, last, last Saturday, we played at um, the Borough Saloon. Oh, I saw that down Which is in Wilhoit, yeah. I love that place. It's another dive bar, man. I like taking my bike out there <laughs> yeah, doing, that, it's fun. doing that ride. Yeah, Great ride. So, yeah, I like those places. I mean, I love them. You know? I love them. There's, this is years ago. It's the plain old country boy, Years man. ago, because I, I moved down here in 04. Yeah. And one of, Same the guys, as me. one of the guys that I was working with, he knew Kim, 
the yep. owner at Lucy's, and knew everybody that hung out there. So he takes me in there. We were working through the night, so like at noon, he goes, let's go on in. They got a grill in the back, and it's a great little neighborhood sure. bar. This is before they did that whole rearrange. Yeah. And, and we pop in. And I'm not, my, my wife doesn't listen to this. It doesn't matter. Um, there was a time in my life, long before I met her in the Bay Area, where I was a regular, from the time I was 16, a regular at every dive bar in Hayward and San Leandro there was. I would walk in, just like you here, they knew what you drank. I, I've worked in 47 states. I, I, I like to and walk into dive bars. I would walk into a bar. <laughs> And in one place, a 7-7 would slide across. I'd walk into another place, yeah. a screwdriver would slide across. Yeah. Walk into another place, Jack and Rock. I had a specific drink for each, each bar. Sure. And that was my M.O. from the time I was like 16, <laughs> okay, hanging out with my Uncle Kerry, Kerry Manson. Back, hey, when Kerry. The, back when the drinking age was 16. No, <laughs> sort of, I guess. When I was 16, I looked right. 30. When I was yeah, 25, yeah, yeah. I looked 50. Yeah. I'm 52 now, and I'm yeah. finally almost looking my age. People <laughs> guessing their mid-60s. I go, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> but, and then, obviously, I, I, through the course of some life changes, that practice stopped. Sure. When we moved down here, I didn't know anybody. I yeah. know, so I get this buddy of mine at work. We walk into Lucy's. And that became kind of like a little hangout. That's kind of funny because the very so, very first person that I met in this town was Little Larry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Larry Healy, good, a great family, good, good people, man, great musician. So I, I start hanging out there, and I was hanging out there enough to where <laughs> if I didn't show up one day, and I'd see somebody at Safeway in Chino because I, I was sure. living in Paulden, now I'm in Chino, and we're talking. 07, 08. So three, four years here. If I didn't show up for a couple days, because I'm working, tired, whatever. They'd be worried about you. I see somebody say, "Hey, everything okay? You all right? You, everything okay? Yeah, yeah. Why? What, have you heard something? I don't know. Well, I haven't seen you in a while. What, well, I'm right here. No, Just I my liver rest, man. Like, oh, man. So I start thinking, this is bad. This ain't. This good. is a bad deal. Yeah. Then I'm in there one night. And there's a regular there. I'm not going to say who, because we have since had great conversations. Sure. But he had a few too many. And I was in there photographing a band. Yeah. And he did not like my flash going off. Oh. So I was like, well, I'm, you know, they're paying me to be here. I got, you know, I got to You got to be here, man. And he goes, cut it out. He's yelling it loud enough they can hear him over the band. So then I get, you know, I ticked off. So I just kind of flash him. You know, like, sit down. Let me do my job. He comes over and grabs the camera out of my hand. And it got to where people got off their bar stools and were saying, hey, 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 you guys, settle down, settle down. So I said, you know what, I'm done. I tell the band, you know what, I, I got enough. I'm getting out of here. I grab my stuff and I leave. And I think to myself, you know what, I'm in there too much. I ain't going back. I, wouldn't even, yeah, I, I didn't even have a cocktail that night. I, just, I was there literally working. Sure. So about three weeks go by. I haven't stepped foot in the place. And I bump into one of the regulars at Safeway. And he goes, hey. Everything all right? I'm like, yeah, why? He goes, well, we heard you got into a fight with so-and-so, and and you (laughs) threw your camera, and it escalated and escalated, and then you didn't show up for a while, so we heard this. We heard the cops came and arrested. And I'm like, no, none of this happened. I've actually talked to him since, and everything's cool. Small town, man. Well, small town, (laughs) and the fact that three weeks go by, and I don't go where, and then then I think to myself, I go, oh, I am here way, way too much. Yeah. Going forward, I think I've been in there, when I photographed you guys there for Off the Record, was probably my second or third time in there since like 07, 08. Well, you might have to drop in Friday night. Let's just to see a band, maybe, and grab a burger. Sure. And I kind of feel bad because you know Kim. I, I had gotten to know Kim real well. I, I knew her son Danny pretty good, and and it was just like you know, I when you, it gets to the point where you're not being there is so noticeable. Yeah. Maybe I should stay home a little more often. Well, you know, the one thing about Lucy's, it's one step up from the wishing well. You know. <laughs> I used to live right on the other side of the highway from the Wishing Well. I played in there when I first moved here. Now, before With they Danny had, Romero, actually. No, really? I, I probably photographed <laughs> it. I, I probably got images of it. Well, he was just starting out. He was pretty, no, that, pretty he, shy guy. He was one of the first guys I ever met yeah. when I was out here. He's yeah. real shy. Yeah. When he so first, much so that he almost faced the back of the stage yeah, the whole time. Yeah. It's bad. I probably got some old negatives yeah. of you laying around somewhere. I've got to dig those up. 
Yeah, I'm still waiting for him to come by my house to fix that outlet, Danny Romero, if you're listening to this. <laughs> it's only been five years since we did that trade-off job. <laughs> I would have been here on time today, but I was sitting in my house in the dark because that outlet doesn't work. Worried to death. <laughs> Worried to death. Well, how's this so, going to get fixed? So you, you, <laughs> you come out here in 04. Yeah. You start playing a little bit of music. I didn't play some music until I think it was probably, I'm going to say, oh, seven, oh, eight, something yeah. like that. And I started playing in here. Because, you know, what the problem was, Jersey Lilies was my Lucy's for you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Every night? Yeah. Well, you know, I was single at the time, so yeah. I do whatever I wanted. Now, I got to ask you again, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. You step out every once in a while and grab one of them cancer sticks, man. Yeah. That didn't stop yeah, after no, 54 you know, it, weeks ago? It did. It did. But, you know, I got yeah, I got back into it. It's a bad habit. I got to shake. It's a bad one, man. I know it. Yeah. I have had some bad habits over the years. Sure. That's there was, a bad one. There was, there was about a... Uh, I went from not never smoking to tending bar, working in a bar. Sure. And I am convinced the guy only hired me. This was in California. Because you didn't so, smoke. No, so that every once in a while I would call in sick and he wouldn't have to see me because I was sitting in there every <laughs> night. And this was back in California when you were smoking the bar. Sure. So we're talking yeah, about yeah. the late 80s. Sure. And uh, I went from not smoking at all, working a Sunday afternoon and Monday afternoon shift for him. Those are my days off from the studio I worked at. And it was dead. But he just wasn't open, so he wanted to be open two days that he had been closed. Yeah. So I'd sit in there, and all my all would happen. My buddies would come in. My roommate at the time and his buddies, a couple, and we'd sit and drink the yeah. whole time. Sit and drink and smoke cigarettes. So I started. I went from not smoking at all, yeah. to three packs a day within about two months. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I quit for three years, and uh, that's actually when I started smoking again. Was playing in Jersey Lilies. The same thing. Uh, There's a little story man. about that. It was the last time I was doing the open gym. Yeah, you know, finished up for the night. There were some guys from the valley sitting on the balcony, and they wanted to hear one more song. And they said, "We we'll give you a hundred bucks, to play one more song." I'm like, "Sure, I'll go there. Just unplug my acoustic and walk out there and sing it and play it." And I got done, they stuck a cigarette in my mouth, and that was it. I was back smoking. Oh man, it wasn't worth the hundred bucks. Remember trust the song? Me. I don't remember what the song was. <laughs> Was it worth it? Probably, yeah. It really wasn't worth it. <laughs> Free bird. What? Yeah, right? <laughs> Good Lord. No, but yeah, over the year, over the uh, my sordid past, there was a period of time when uh, when I was a daily user of other s- substances, and uh, I was fortunate enough when, when I sort of cleaned up my act and quit the bar, quit Ted and Bar, I stopped smoking within three days. It, for me, it wasn't the nicotine. It wasn't the smoke. It was something to do with my fingers and my hands. Yeah. And I'm still like that. I'm a fidgety guy. Pens or pencils are always in my mouth and stuff. And I had some pretty, pretty uh, in-depth chemical that I was shoving in various orifices <laughs> over the years. Too. Well, I was I was fortunate enough never to do any of that. That was so. all we. As, uh, we're, yeah, I watched a lot of it go on with the bands I used to play. Yeah, in, you know. and uh, and you know everything we did ended up up our nose at some point. Sure. And uh, n- fortunately for me, nothing was too hard to kick. The hardest thing for me, my because I, I do have an addictive personality. The hardest thing for me to kick is work. I if I am not working at least two full time jobs. I spin out of control and then do other things that are oh, that, yeah. are, that are bad for it's me. Bad, yeah. I tell you, my my son being born eight years ago, almost nine years ago, really kicked that off to the side. It's like, okay, I got to be home. I got to be around for this little guy. First couple of years of his life, I turned around and he was five. I was like, what happened? Oh man, it's fast. I tell you what, it's insanely fast. Yeah. How, how quickly they grow up? I was running a photo studio and working for the Courier full times. So I was running two full time jobs. And I just got, I had to stop it. And now I'm going the other way. It's yeah. Like, I got to go somewhere? I don't want to go somewhere. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I know. I work from home still. So yeah. I'm a lumber trader, so. Yeah. You know, What's I involved play music. in a lumber trade? Tell me what that, I boil do. that down for well, a knucklehead. Well, you know, I, I basically sell rail cars or truckloads or, you know, of lumber yeah. all, all across the country to different large projects. So, um, you know, so apartment direct, jobs and stuff like that. Directly to, like, the contractors? To the or? contractors, yeah. Large framing contractors or GCs, whichever, you know. Yeah. Whichever it is. 
you going to be able to cut that tie at any time soon and do this full time? Or uh, you know, uh, I would prefer to do music full time. It's yeah. a hell of a lot more fun than working for a living. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, I, if I play music, it's not really usually. working, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll run through again. We got Walker and Company. Walker we got Company off, off the, the record. record. Um, I do some solo stuff. So, I want to talk about well. that because you got something coming up at the unofficial official sponsor of the Mile High Show. Okay, Big Daddy's Barbecue out in Chino. Yeah, that's on uh, June the twenty second. Twenty second, a Friday afternoon. Friday night. Yeah, five Friday to evening. seven. Five I believe till, five till seven or eight or yeah. whatever. Sure. And uh, you know what? I always feel that way about it too. If I have to play a little bit longer and there's people sitting yeah. around, I always do because. Yeah. I'm already set up, man. That's a good. It's turning into a good little spot. Have you been out there already? I have. I only got the opportunity to drive by it. I don't really get out to Chino that much. No, uh, you know, it's turning into a cool little yeah, spot. It was and, busy the day I drove by. Well, and the thing is, is because he, he, Eric Veneer, thank you, yeah. Eric. He takes care of us. He's one of our good sponsors. We've gotten to do a couple live shows there on the stage. He stays open late for us, and so it's really nice. cool. Yeah, because he closes at, I believe, five, maybe six. During the week, and then on Fridays he stays open late strictly for the music. Okay, and it's get. He's been. This is the fourth year doing it. Sky books it. Less kind of helps coordinate, make sure. sure everybody's going good and plugged in and got the gear they need. Uh, and then he also plays out there once a month. Less and Sky both do. But over the last four years, this is year four. Tail end of the last year, and so far this season because he does it spring and summer, people are showing up. Saying, okay, we are here for the music. Oh, yeah, and we're going to eat. That's, that's Which good. Is great. He's packing out that patio. Sure. It's turning into a really good little venue. Yeah, Les, uh, Les, I was talking to Les the other day, and there's a rumor that Les would like to try to do something out there, yeah. the same as what we're doing here. Yeah, which would be got, great. And I said yeah. I would support that. You know? we, Eric wants yeah, to maybe do something a little later, and then Darren yeah, yeah, Mahoney. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about maybe doing some stuff off. So we got a couple things in the works. Cool. We're, yeah. we're gonna we're hopefully turning, reminding folks that uh, well, obviously you live here in Prescott. I do. Yes. Pre- great, and there's so many venues here up and down, uh, and also in Prescott Valley. Sure. But people kind of forget Chino's not only got some spots we can play, Big Daddy's, El Charo being two of the main ones. Um, but also, there's a lot of musicians that live out in Chino. Absolutely, there and is. And it's they're growing. coming out here to Prescott, Prescott Valley to play. And if we could keep them a little closer and get a couple of Insurgent Brewing, El Charo, Big Daddies, there's a couple others. Let's stick around and get well, some two, of those off nights. Two of the guys I mentioned, three of the people I mentioned earlier was uh, DeVille. Yeah. Uh, he lives in, he's going to be living in Chino oh, nice, very nice. shortly. Just got a new house. He's Does ready Elden to move in. Well? Eldon lives out yeah. there. Mike Hutchinson lives out yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. You know, there's people that live out Darren there. Darren lives yeah. down the street yeah. from me. Darren Mahoney. Yeah, there you go. He's recuperating. He had his wrist ah, operated on carpal okay. tunnel last week. So uh, what what do you got coming up for Off the Record? Anything anything on the books oh, yet? Well, or? Off the Record is uh, playing at the Jersey Lilies on the 24th. Whoa, wait a minute. 20, 20th and 21st nice. of July. We're also playing. Um, we're doing the summer concert series at Stone Ridge. They do a at one the go- at the at clubhouse the, there. The clubhouse, yeah, that's in August, August twenty fifth, nice. I believe. Yeah, we're playing Lucy's on the yeah. this Friday. <laughs> Fo- uh, following that, we've got uh, well Walker and Company. We're playing at at the um, Prescott Country Club in Dewey. Okay, I know that's that. in yeah, yeah. Uh, two weeks' time, I believe it is. It's for the grand opening as well. Nice. So that's you know that's Mike Hutchison, Eldon Long, Sky, and myself. Yeah. And that band. <laughs> that's all I can think of off the top yeah, of my head at the fine. moment. That's enough. You know, there's but a lot going the biggie, on. Biggie, and again, one of the reasons why we're here is you're playing here tonight. You're heading the jam night, whatever you want to call it, whether it's classic rock it's, or yeah, music, Jersey Lilies jam night is what we it call is. it. Yeah. Every Wednesday, seven to nine. Seven till ten. Seven till ten. And actually, the last couple of weeks we've had such a good turnout with both nice. spectators and musicians. We run a little later. Ah, well. nice, so that's nice. all good, man. And we'll that's every work. Wednesday, led every by Wednesday. My yeah. guest, Glenn. Rain Walker. or shine. Nice. <laughs> it's a beautiful spot. A lot of fun. It is. They got what six nights a week here, live music. I think they got seven nights. Six or seven. Yeah, yeah it's, it's every night. You mentioned Larry. Is he still playing here? Larry plays here on Sunday Sundays. afternoons from four till seven, I believe. Uh, Nick you got, Canuel's in and out. Nick all Canuel. The time. He plays a couple of nights a week here. You know, the bands yeah. on the weekends. Obviously, the 
You know, the Monday night, I don't know, that maybe Monday night's the only night they don't have something. I can't remember. And I can't knows? either remember, so yeah. Pop in here with the guitar, they'll start playing it. Oh, I'm pretty sure they allow that, yes, no problem. All right, no. and then you are at Big Daddy's later this on month. The, on I'll, June, I'll the, June the 22nd. 22nd. Yeah. Nice, nice. Anything else you want to talk about? Anything you want to plug? No, not really. No, you got to get another cool. drink. You got to get plugged in. The band's already setting up there. Yeah, we're going to a little real fun. Real quick before we cut out, tell me a little bit about the folks that travel through here. You know, it's uh, it's kind of cool. I mean, it's it's they're just a bunch of great musicians, and, and honestly, there's, I really want to put a lot of plugs in for guys like Jimmy Peck, who's a fantastic uh, lead guitar player. Um, you know, Eldon and Deville. Uh, those guys. If it wasn't for those guys, this thing wouldn't really yeah. honestly happen. It's it's got to do with all the musicians that come out. Yeah. You know, Leslie or Lyman supports this 100% all the I'll time. I'll cut that part out. Well, you should cut it. Well, his hair supports it. I'm his, not sure about the rest. His hair is here. Yes, That's his right. hair is always here. You know? He's always here with that. There's a, you know, there's just too many to, to yeah. mention, honestly. There's just a ton of guys that come and every week. I feel week. bad. He was just right here. Um, Jesse. Jesse, yeah. Yeah. He's, that guy is incredible. He's a kick-ass guitar player, yeah, man. He is he's, good. he's really good. And then there's you. Well, I, I don't no, play guitar uh, real well, shabby, but I, yeah. man, you are good. Yeah, man. My, my my only instrument I play is vocals, really. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm not very good at anything else. Well, hey, thanks for sitting down again. Jersey Lilies every Wednesday, seven till whenever. Seven till the ten ish. Seven till eleven. The, yeah. Seven till you stop asking for music and stop right, drinking. Right. And as always, the key for me at Jersey Lilies is free popcorn. Yeah, that's I mean, the you best. Bring, bring the little lady out, buy her dinner. <laughs> Just gonna dinner, cost you a dime, dinner in man. a bowl, right over yeah, there under the light. You lines. got it. Well, Glenn, thank you so much. I appreciate it. We're gonna um, use this to record a little bit of music. We'll sure. do for the intro and outro. Anything else you want to hit? Anything no, that's it, man. Plug? Thanks, thanks so right, much good. for having me out. Thanks, man. Hey, I.